We're at CES 2020 and just got done speaking with AMD. We're actually in the MSI booth right now where there's a bit more space to film, but we spoke with AMD about a few things and the topic for this specific video is what's going on with the drivers. And the reason I wanted to focus on that for, the, for our meeting with AMD's graphics team is that the GPUs physically as hardware, they're pretty good now. Objectively, AMD's in a good spot for performance. But the one thing that's constantly criticized by us and by more so than us is by users is the driver package. So we decided to talk to AMD and ask, you're clearly aware of this issue, right? So what's the plan to fix it? That's what we're going to talk about today, along with some additional clarification notes on the 5600 XT, which was announced earlier in the show. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. Let's start with the driver story. Our kind of position on this, 2019, we gave the 5700 XE best overall for the GPU. The downside was, the one major downside, was that drivers in a lot of instances were still kind of questionable for some users specifically, can launch certain games, had to return cards we've heard about because the card, the drivers weren't playing well with the system as a whole. And then the other issue is just weird things like the fan profile is not quite working and we showed AMD some of our screen grabs of those bugs while we were in the meeting. The fan profile is not working uh, since Vega Frontier Edition general bugginess in the driver package, but then still doing a major overhaul that completely changes the UI. So it's almost like, what's really the the focus here? Because you're improving the, the UI and the user experience before fixing the bugs, so actually it's not improving the user experience. So that's the problem with AMD's cards, is even if it's working great for you, and the 5700 XTs, we don't really have too many major critical system breaking bugs anymore. There are a lot of people who still have those. And uh, when we recommended the, the 5700XT as the best overall, one of the comments towards the top of the, of the video was, well, I wanted to like it and I bought it, but I had to return it because it didn't work. So I asked AMD about that. And the message that AMD is kind of sticking with here on this one is uh, Adrenaline 2020, that December launch driver package, fancy new UI and everything. The goal for that was to reset and revamp the UI, it's AMD's wording for that, and make it more accessible. So Wattman was the given example of that. We can speak to this where Wattman, we used it because we had to, and that was the only reason. Because Afterburner, we're in the MSI suite after all, Afterburner works far better when it, when it works with the card. But a lot of the time you were stuck using Wattman just because of compatibility issues. So anyway, AMD acknowledged that Wattman was kind of uh, difficult to work with, and they've tried to improve it with the new Adrenaline 2020 update. There were, uh, AMD said that they are continuously monitoring issues on forums, and they especially monitor Reddit and forums around launch, so they do see the complaints and try to act on them. Now, uh, one of the concerns I had that I did bring up in this meeting was, we've, we've voiced the same issue, raised the same concerns with AMD since Vega Frontier Edition with these drivers, and every time I bring it up with someone, the the good side of it is I bring it up with someone at AMD and they say, oh, wow, I didn't know about that. That's, that's concerning, that's annoying, whatever. Let me try and get this fixed. And every time, it's like, it's a new story to someone I talk to, which the problem there is you're going, okay, cool, this person cares enough that they're reacting in a way that seems like they, they genuinely want to fix the issue with the driver that I'm, whatever I'm talking about at the time, but then it doesn't go anywhere because the next person's never heard of it and a fix never comes out. So I brought that point up. AMD is aware of it. It sounds like there's a bit better internal communication now between the teams. So you have to remember the GPU hardware team is different from the software team. So there's some comms there and it's many companies within another mini company of AMD ultimately. So there's some comms there where you can have some, I guess, signal to noise issues. But it sounds like they're trying to fix the internal communication to get those issues as they're brought up, passed to the right people and fixed. And in media, we do see a lot of the issues before they go out to public anyway because we have early samples. So there's a possibility that this could be, if AMD can properly communicate internally and get stuff fixed as, as media raises the issue, there's a possibility that this could be a major help to the drivers. We have to see it actually happen. But another thing AMD noted is that 
the features are done at this point and they're focusing now on stability. So all the fancy features, fancy UI, that was totally unnecessary, but it looks good, I guess. Uh, they're, they're supposed to be done with that stuff and focusing on fixing crashes, black screens, um, weird bugs where the fan speed doesn't set and resets itself, all that. And the point that is often brought up almost every year with the Radeon Group or anyone remotely close to Radeon Graphics is that NVIDIA's control panel looks old, like 90s old or early 2000s old. And my response is always the same, which is, but it works. And I know where the stuff is, and it doesn't move and change names, and it doesn't crash, and most of the time. So AMD's aware of this too, and it sounds like, I could say this from my meetings over there, the right people want to fix the product, so that's really good, that's really encouraging. It's just a matter of it uh, getting done. So the fact that someone actually wants to fix it, unlike a lot of the companies we work with where you kind of talk to PR and they're like, okay, whatever. They don't really report back the issue to the PMs or the people actually in charge of fixing things. The fact that AMD wants to actually improve the, the drivers is the first step. Uh, another thing that AMD noted, it's promising on following up on the fan issue that I've been complaining about for a few years. I actually sort of believed on this time because the, uh, the people I was talking to genuinely seemed like they want to fix that problem. And I, I came prepared. I had a Trello board I made with bug reports of steps to reproduce and GIF captures of the issue. And I think that was enough to finally get some attention on the problems I've had. So I basically treated it like a bug report for any, any other company if, if you were working there as a test technician. Uh, separately, let's see. It looks like, I, I think it's just a matter of getting stuff up the chain. So anyway, if you've been wondering, come on AMD, what's the deal with the drivers? Get, the, get it together because the hardware is good but the drivers are still the, the toughest point for a sell or the toughest point for a customer who doesn't know a lot about troubleshooting, then it sounds like they know this is a problem and the right people know it's a problem. And uh, like I said, now it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to trust too much because we've heard this so often. But from what I heard today, I'm hoping that the right people are trying to fix the problem and we'll see. If, it sounds like maybe for 2020, properly, there should be some actual stability pushes and bug fixes. And there's already been one for this year that I haven't tested yet that's fixed a few of the problems I complained about, I think. So anyway, that sounds promising is where I'll probably leave the driver discussion. If you're curious what AMD had to say about it, uh, that's more or less what it was. They're aware of the issues. So the other upside here is it's not like AMD saying, we don't, we don't see any problem with the drivers at all. What are you talking about? It's acknowledgement, which I can't emphasize enough how rare that is in this industry where typically you get I've never heard that before. And that's the go-to PR answer to a uh, complaint. So anyway, that, it sounds like a positive direction for AMD driver said. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up, one of the, the more fun topics I like to ask for manufacturers at trade shows is, OK, so after your announcement, did you look at comments online? And if so, what's the common misconception? Or what's the thing you want to respond to the most? Because I'm curious if they are as tortured by comments as we often are. And the answer was for the 5600 XT launch, apparently there were a lot of questions of why does this exist? And we thought that was kind of obvious. So if you're not aware of the 5600 XT, it's a 36 CU unit, same CUs as the 5700, but they can uh, kind of fuse between them based on supplies, pretty common approach for segmentation that I'm fine with actually. It's binned for lower leakage. So the goal is to focus on uh, performance per watt rather than just peak clock performance. So focusing on power leakage is a way to do that. But the why does it exist comment, I think should be pretty easy to answer. It's $280 part, comes in same as the TI, 1660 TI, which shouldn't exist really, and over the 1660 Super, which is 240 or something. So AMD hasn't had a card there. They've had the 5500 XT and they've had the 5700 non-XT. There's this massive 100 sometimes hundred plus dollar gap between the two where NVIDIA has existed standalone. And you can't really count the RX 500 series anymore because they're not good anymore by modern standards. So that's why the card exists. Figured I'd answer that one. It's, it's to go head to head with NVIDIA where obviously AMD has no current uh, market offering. And I think that probably covers most of the, the main discussion for the AMD stuff for the Radeon side anyway, where we just wanted to cover the driver story. So we talked to them. Uh, I, I showed them a Trello board with all the logs I've produced of bugs. We wanted to publish it, but we went to AMD first with it to see if it can hopefully get fixed. And hopefully 
things improved for drivers. But just to really emphasize, the hardware is good. The 5700 XT we did call best overall for 2019, and I mean that's it's because it earned it. But it needs to get the drivers down. So they're uh, they're 50 percent of the way there, which is a lot more than previously, and things are looking hopefully positive for the rest of Radeon for 2020. But we'll follow up, obviously, as we hear more. Thanks for watching. Check back for more coverage of CES 2020. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Helps out directly. And we'll see you all next time.